Okay, so here is our illustration of a synovial joint, and we'll talk about ma what makes a synovial joint different from uh, the other structural classes of joints that we have. So first and foremost, you can see really clearly here that the place where the bones are meeting has this special space that's set off around it, and that is the joint cavity. Okay, and there's actually fluid in this joint cavity and that helps to lubricate the surfaces of the bones where they're rubbing against each other, among other functions that it has. So the presence of a joint cavity is really indicative of a synovial joint and there are also specific structures that you always find in synovial joints as well, which we'll point out. All um, synovial joints are functionally classified as diarthrotic. Okay, so if you see a synovial joint, it is always going to be considered freely movable. Okay, and we'll talk about what freely movable means as we start looking at the individual synovial joint models that we have. Okay, so here we have uh, in blue one structure that you always find in a synovial joint, and that is articular cartilage, which is made of hyaline cartilage. Okay, so remember on the illustration that we had of the synchondrosis, how there was that extra piece of blue on that picture, that was actually showing a piece of articular cartilage which would be part of a synovial joint. Okay, The green on this illustration is representing the synovial membrane. Okay, and The synovial membrane is the deeper layer of the articular capsule. Okay, which is the main membranous structure that surrounds the joint and separates it from the surrounding tissue. The synovial membrane contains capillaries and cells that work together to filter the blood and add material to it to create the synovial fluid that fills our joint cavity. Okay, and as I said, some of the components in the synovial fluid will act as lubricants to make sure that these pieces of hyaline cartilage, the articular cartilages, can move freely against each other. We'll have macrophages that move in here to clean up any debris that might uh, accumulate on the surfaces. And there will also be, um, since this is a filtrate of the blood, there's also a little bit of oxygen and some glucose in this fluid. So as the cartilages are being compressed, it kind of squeezes them out and then when the compression is removed, they get to refill with the fluid from this space. And that helps to uh, nourish and um, bring oxygen to the cells that live in this articular cartilage. Okay, now as we go past the green layer to this kind of light purple layer, that is the other portion of the articular capsule, which is the fibrous layer. Okay, so the fibrous layer of the articular capsule is really uh, more of a structural component. It's made of dense irregular connective tissue and it's there to make sure that the bones stay in alignment in our joint. Okay, it also connects the periosteum of one bone to the periosteum of the other bone. Okay, then as we go out to our most superficial layer, you can see this kind of whitish structure. This is a ligament. Okay, Most synovial joints will have ligaments associated with them and the ligaments are there to reinforce the joint. Okay, So the number and position of ligaments will be important to uh, determining the stability of the joint. This happens to be an extra capsular ligament which means it's outside of the joint cavity Sometimes you'll have intracapsular ligaments that are inside the joint cavity or inside the joint capsule. Okay, so that is the basic structure of a synovial joint.